One of the stars of this year's campaign film for See the Hidden Me, John, thanks so much for having a chat with me today because I want to find a little bit more about you because you had a wonderful career, didn't you? I was involved with motorbikes and whatnot. When I was 16, I, I turned professional, which uh, professional at 16 doesn't mean you're a superstar straight away. It means that you ain't got a job and all you do is ride bikes, yeah? But uh, eventually you get better at it, you start getting track records, you start getting uh, five point maximums, you get noticed, you go into a higher level, league position a bit like football, yeah, which is Premier League. And then eventually, like I did, bit of a mistake, I actually uh, rode on the continent, in, I got an international licence, so uh, I ended up fortunate enough to earn a fair bit of money, as they pay more money in England, typical England. When you had your accident, you, you were abroad. Talk yeah. to me about what happened. The uh, accident was actually on the, uh, on the 11th of September 2014. I was actually in Thailand at the time. I got a business out there. But apparently, um, I was on a motorbike. Um, I was hit by a car that apparently they knew was a drunk driver, that apparently didn't stop or leave any skid marks on the road. Um, I was um, clinically dead uh, when I was found three hours later. Um, and um, had a couple of blood transfusions, um, 76 stitches to my head. I lost part of my brain, which is probably the probably the bit that I wanted to lose anyway. <laughs> it's a bit of a joke I have with myself. Unfortunately, unless I go 7,000 miles or 10,000 kilometres back to Thailand and investigate, I don't think I'll ever know. Mm -hmm. All I know is there was a big bill that come from the hospital abroad, like you do. Anyway, luckily my son's, and I was in a coma for a couple of months, nearly lost me on the, uh, bringing me off the uh, life support machine. Mm -hmm. In 30 years, I've never seen anybody with the extent of injuries that I had and the damage to my brain and all the other bits of to it, that's able to do the things that I've been doing. Everything I found a struggle with, I tried to find another way around it. I'll give you an example, I kept losing my keys. So I thought the obvious thing to do, when I come in the house, so you, it's pretty much what everybody should do on a day-to-day -day basis. You walk into the house, you take your shoes off. So I thought, what a great idea if I dropped my keys in my shoes. Because then when I want to go out, I'm going to put my shoes on. And now you sort of like map your own brain on put your shoes on, find the keys, not a problem. Put your, put your tablets that you take next to the kettle. It's little things that trigger other things to actually fall into place that map, map out. Because I struggled to talk and, and I struggled to walk for the first two years and then all of a sudden I asked my son for a cup of coffee and I thought, crikey, who's in the room with me? Um, wow. And since then, no one's been able to shut me off. But uh, it's, it's like Tourette's and OCD at the same time. That's all, the only way I can explain it. It's like things flash into your brain and get pulled from triggers from the back of your brain. It starts a conversation that all of a sudden you end up on 10 or 20 roads to get to the point. So. On those grounds, it's nice feeling to me that I can speak as much as I can, but for the person that I'm speaking to, by the time we get back to the point, the point's gone, and I'm actually aware of that, and I am trying my best to stop stop that. I've even got a, a stopwatch on my phone to, to have an alarm when it's a full stop. My dog's been my saviour. He's probably... Uh, I have a bit of a joke, he's probably the only dog in the world that's dropped as many plates, cups, tripped over and walked into door frames um, in the world. You know what I mean? He's the most, you know, it doesn't happen to many dogs because, of course, all I've done is I've used him to, I've used him again to, to get my anxiety away. Because it's, you know, it's all right dropping a cup, everybody drops a cup, everybody. But you know when it happens over and over, and over and over to the point where you actually get to say, right, I'm not gonna drop that cup this way because I'm gonna hold it this way. I'm gonna put some gloves on and I'll wash so it doesn't slip out, yeah? So you're trying to plant and then you drop it. It's a bit of, 
like a carpet being pulled from underneath you. The actual system isn't there for you. And if it wasn't for where I go every week, um, Headway in Derby, which are part of a national organisation for people like myself and in worse situations um, as well, uh, giving support to... And I'm not going to... Patron, uh, contradict myself now, obviously nobody knows about head injury. These, these people, because they're around head injured people and they're, they're approaching it in a different way of watching people's personalities and trying to find out who they are and what things trigger upset, which it's very deep, it's psychological and they've gone the psychological way to actually give the support that they give now, which in all fairness, you know, it's the, uh, you become a family. You know, everybody become a family because we're all in a similar situation of not knowing where anything's going. John, in the film... Yeah. One of the things you wanted to get across was how often people underestimate you because they find out you have a brain injury. What I've found is when someone talks to you, it's almost like they know one of two answers that you're going to get back, whether it's an agreement or whether it's a disagreement. And that's how they map their mind, that's how all human beings map their mind out. But unfortunately, with brain injured people, you're not going to give either of those answers. It'll be something totally different. And you can see, you can actually see a brain injured effect coming in their eyes when their eyes start rolling while you're talking. It's a little bit off-putting, but they, their eyes start rolling because now they're thinking, crikey, what am I going to say? or I want to talk about something else, or how long is this going to take? And you actually feel like they just, that they're assuming for that split minute that you're okay. So you can't win. If you say what they want you to say, there's nothing wrong with you. But then when you say something that's totally against, or something they'd never think of, or whatever, then they think you're, you've got brain injury. But then they've got a question where they can't answer what kind of brain injury you got other than the actual things they can see. And it really is, apart from me, I've got a bit of a dent and a few, a few scars, but uh, you know, for most it's an invisible disability. I got told it was a health skelter, yeah? And that's really what brain injury is about. Sometimes you're up here and sometimes you're down there and there's no way you know when you're gonna go down there. And when you're down there, the getting up is very, very slow. It's not, not something that happens day and night. It happens in everybody's life, I know it does, but they can pick themselves up a lot quicker or they can get rid of that problem or they can make it, well, all these things are delayed. I'm not gonna say forgotten, they're all delayed on how to do. And again, mentioning headway before, in all fairness, they've had a number of calls off me. I haven't said I've done this on my own. I've just been physically alone while I've been doing it. Did I answer that question? In you way? did. You did. Yeah. I'd, th I'd actually forgotten what the question was. Well, you did, a brilliant, the you did a brilliant right. job of answering it. Could I have them on my lap? Yeah. <laughs> come on then, up you come, Ken. There you go. You sit there. Do you like the light and the camera? Maybe I've been lucky this dog's responded to the disabilities I've had. I'll give you an example. Whenever I walk towards him, He's okay, no problem. But if I turn the light off and walk towards him, I can guarantee if I turn it back on, he'd be hit in the corner because he knows that I'm going to trip over him. But I'm fortunate enough to have got a really cool dog, really. I suppose that's the only answer. Mm. There's no immediate one finger click to understand brain injured people. You're not going to get that. I think knowing more information on that particular person is important. You need to know if they've had an injury and then you need to take time to actually put into, put into your own mind how they're gonna react with that injury. Well, you're not gonna un understand brain injury, but you're gonna understand how to treat somebody with brain injury by just being not as fast with your life around somebody you know that's had an injury. We're fighting to be the person we were and whatever does happen, that's good or bad, you can't remember about it anyway. You fall over, trip over, whatever. You pretty much forget it pretty quick. So we have got a bonus over most people. John, thank you so much for talking to me and for being part of our film. <laughs>
Thank you. And thanks to Harvey too.